Hello and welcome on 360 Sport on Trust TV. Um, Adini Aji Shafet. Time to take a look at the world of sports, the rough activities that happen. Well, a big one for Chelsea and also Napoli. So painful for Napoli, the fourth half, but uh, it never happened. More of that will be coming on the show, but quickly we start from the home scene as we quickly look at the goals, uh, rather the result of the MPFL La Liga under 15 promises actually uh, taking place over there in Ikene Ogun State. Shooting stars, if you say Gombe United, 2-0 uh, there where they were able to win, because of Basib and also Sunny scoring for shooting stars under 15 in the 56 and also uh, uh, in the 54. Fourth minute, Lobby starts loss against Bielsa United. Joshua and David making two goals for Bielsa United under 15. Why Kenneth actually put one back for Lobby stars? We have Sunshine Stars, one. Doma United, Neil Kudus scoring for Sunshine Stars under 15 uh, in the 62nd minute there. Why in Group C, you have Ayimba, the wall of the Jakarta, 4 1 in that encounter. Well, uh, Umo Ezekaya was able to pull one back for Jakarta FC. Why Ayimba had four goals scored by Gabriel, who actually had a Hat trick and you have major uh, scoring, making it uh, go number four for Ayimba, making it 4 1 there. Just to look at the MPFL La Liga under 15 promises taking place over there at Raymond Star Stadium in Ikene. A good one. Uh, well, alongside me in the studio, I have uh, Emmanuel Fashimi. Good to have Fashimi. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, good one for the MPFL La Liga under 15 uh, tournament, but um, this same tournament happened uh, last season. Uh, I didn't really see some of the players that were picked. Uh, I've not really heard much about them. But I believe this time around it's going to be a different ball game. But I could still remember one of the players uh, that I at least I followed up uh, found his way to I think La Liga Secunda B. But after maybe he went for trials after that, I never know what uh, happened. Maybe he succeeded or not. But Overall, it's good that we're having this partnership with uh, the La Liga team. Uh, let's not forget, it was um, Rivers United that started this whole uh, joining of partnership. Rivers United had the partnership with uh, Real Madrid, where they groom young stars, children, and s export them to Spain. The same thing is what is happening with the La Liga, La, uh, La Liga MPFL under 15, which is an avenue to harness young talent and see how we can bring down uh, their style of development in football mm. down to Nigeria. And that is the essence of this particular tournament. And I want um, every other sporting stakeholder, um, Nigerians in the society, those football lovers and those who have uh, our game, our football at heart, how for us to grow, um, it would be good for them to actually come in and don't leave their, this uh, league for one, for one person. They actually need other sponsors, not just sponsors alone. They also need, um, they need the media attention. They need exposure. And for the players that will be, for the players that will be uh, selected, that will be discovered, they should, don't, they should not allow you to just end here after one season, and you never hear, you will never hear anything about them. It's a way of also telling our clubs to have all these cadet teams, the age grade teams. We can we see that uh, uh, in Europe, even the UEFA Champions League that is going on. You see the youth Champions League. So the the bigger boys plays, the youth team also plays there. So if we have something like this, uh, I, I think it's a good development. It's going to help us to actually harness uh, those talent that we've not seen raw one. We can see them here. A lot of talents they are playing this competition, shooting stars too against Gombe United. Well, good one for the likes of Ayimba and also shooting stars there. Well, to let you know that uh, this event will continue uh, over there in Kenya and we continue to give you more uh, much uh, update concerning this particular competition taking place over there in Ogun State. Right now, let's talk about the women football, NWFL. Uh, games will be on tonight, well, rather today in the evening by the Nigeria time. That's 4 p.m. across Nigeria where the ladies will be fighting hard to see who will be staying fully in the NWF for this season. Let's look at those fixtures that will be coming up uh, this evening in Group A. Well, we have Bayosa Queens against Nigeria Tells. Nigeria Tells, they fought out last week, but they couldn't qualify for the Super 6. A very painful one for them after they got a penalty and it was actually blown away. Bayosa Queens will be hosting them uh, today. And you have Delta uh, Queens versus Rivers Angels, a big match there. Hatland Queens versus Royal Queens. Now, Emmanuel, you look at this game, Delta versus Rivers. This is a big South-South uh, derby. Yes, yeah, it's a big South-South derby because both of them are champions 
for Delta Queens and uh, Rivers uh, Angels. These are the two. Uh, these are two powerhouses when it comes to women's football uh, in Nigeria. And um, it, it, the, all, th that particular encounter is all about supremacy. Mm. Who takes? Uh, who tops the table? Who stands? Uh, because uh, Delta Queens, they, are, they have been brilliant uh, this season. They are topping the they, they are topping the table, and they want to show that supremacy to Rivers Angel that okay, uh, I think they are one of uh, the side that have not lost the game in NWFL this season. So they want that um, that that uh, that record to continue to the end of this uh, to the end of because it's an average league. They will have to go and play the super uh, the super six where we we'll now have the overall champions. But it's, it's a big one. And overall, quickly for Nigeria writers, it's so painful that uh, they couldn't qualify for uh, the Super 6 this, uh, the, for the second season running. But they, 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 they didn't do bad. No matter how we look at it, they are, they are in a better position on the table. But just that they blew their chances away here uh, last week where they actually um, played at home and they couldn't get that draw. They got the penalty. They got the chance to redeem themselves, but they lost it. Uh, all they just need to do is to prepare well again for next season. Well, they just have to prepare for Nancy right now. They need to meet all of those games. Now we're looking at the Group A fixtures there. Match day 14 in the NWFL. Let's look at the Group B fixtures that will also be coming up uh, today. Nasarawa Amazons, Adamawa Queens, a big one there. Northern Derby. You have Abia Angels versus Edo Queens. And FC Robo Queens of Lagos versus Queenflens Queens of Kogi. Another big one here. Uh, you have Nasarawa Amazon versus Adamawa Queens. Uh, yeah, like I call it Northern I mean, Derby. For Nasarawa Amazons, um, they they, they are a bit shaky this season, but um, since it's a northern derby between uh, Nasara and uh, Adamawa Queens, they know themselves very well. And if you look at it uh, for Adamawa Queens, I think this season, uh, unlike what we saw with Adamawa Queens last season, they were actually not um, not too good last season. But this season, I think they are brilliant. They've done uh, they've done themselves well by trying to stay up in the league. So let's see what happens between them and for. The other games in that group, well, uh, it's looking good for Edo Queens because Edo Queens is actually uh, topping, uh, topping the group B. group B. It's actually topping that uh, group. So if we have um, assistance right now, I think there's whatever happens to Edo Queens in that group, they, they, are, they already have their one leg already in this. Now, it seems uh, for six. this season, the battle of the Super Six right now because uh, you have Edo Queens, you have uh, Delta Queens, you have... Uh, 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 Rivers Angels and all of them fighting for to see who will win this Super Six. I, I still remember uh, the coach of uh, uh, Delta Queens, uh, Coach Blankson, saying, "Well, they are prepared to make sure they win the, that their target is the Super Six. Uh, uh, sincerely speaking, with the, their level of play this season, uh, I think I want to agree with uh, the coach uh, by saying that because. Um, uh, if you look at the way they play, they play like a team that means business. Mm. They also want to replicate what Baeza Queens uh, did. Uh, because when they when they won the Super Six, they actually represented Nigeria in in the continent. And where they uh, they got to the bronze, uh, I think they uh, to the bronze uh, match, and which they actually did well for Nigeria. But if you look at Delta Queens, I think Delta Queens want to surpass. Uh, that, that, that level where Bayesa Queens got to in the continent. But their first main target is win the Super Six. Then when you win the Super Six, you can set your eyes uh, at the continent. But now I, I believe um, when it gets to the Super Six, because it's going to be a different ball game, you have to play what is called a round robin, uh, round robin game. So if you lose one match, then you should. <laughs> you, I, I you remember put that uh, in a the very last time Rivers Angels were the first part of the team to go there to represent Nigeria. They didn't do well at all. At all. Then Bayosa Queens. Now, uh, we're just uh, looking at the third one now. Hopefully, a Nigerian team can actually get better. In fact, maybe this time around win it. Uh, that is what everybody was expecting Rivers Angels to, to actually do. Because when it comes to women's football, uh, I, I don't think they think lost it, that touch. It's it, that they, are, they are not as, uh, as, as strong, strong or prolific as they used to be. Yes. Um, when it comes to women football in Africa, whether national or club, uh, club football for women, Nigeria is a force to be reckoned with. But Rivers Indians went there, didn't they actually show much hunger, commitment, or whatever? And uh, the, the, the manner in which they lost their first two games 
was not really okay. About for Bayesa Queens, they hit the ground running, they got there, their first game, they lost it, but second, they, had to, they won their first, second game, third game, and then they qualified to the knockout stages, en route to the uh, semi final, and then the third place match. So the only country I can say we can, uh, as in the only country that can match us when it comes to women's football right now uh, is South Africa, Morocco, who has actually upped their game. But if you come down to the club side, it's only South African club that can really say, okay, they can hold their, their own against uh, Nigerian uh, club side when it comes to women's football. But overall, let's see whoever goes there this season, let's see if we can actually win it this time around. Well, it's getting so tough right now when it comes to women's football in Africa. The likes of Morocco, South Africa really taking over from Nigeria. Even Zambia too are now one of the forces to be reckoned with when it comes to women's football. We'll be unveiling matches uh, as later for tonight or uh, rather evening across Nigeria where the ladies will be fighting hard uh, to see who stays on. Although we already know that uh, some clubs right now they've done the business of qualifying for the Super 6 but uh, at least uh, they need to wrap up the entire uh, bridge league before the Super 6 will be coming up. Well, good one there. Just looking at those fixtures as we move straight to the big one. Well, over, <laughs> over there in Europe, looking at the matches that I play yesterday in the UEFA Champions League now. As you talk about the uh, Champions League, uh, well, games were on and it, it was a tough one for the likes of Chelsea and also Napoli. I'm talking about uh, UEFA Champions League right now. Let's talk about Osimhen's goal. Osimhen's goal not enough as AC Milan dump Napoli out of UCL. UCL, UEFA Champions League. Uh, well, a tough one there. <laughs> he fought hard. He ran around. He really did everything he could. But uh, in fact, the goal he scored was an extra effort. Not every player would score that goal. But yet, they couldn't get it right. Well, um, if I'm um, the, coach of, uh, the coach of Napoli, then I have to call uh, this guy, uh, Quaraskelia, sit him down, and then tell him next time is a team sport, not individual sports. Mm. If you want to sell yourself, not when you have something at stake. Um, everything went well from the back line to the midfield, but up front, only Kwaraskele Atuwali did not do Napoli very well. Mm. Why did I say that? They had, even in the first leg, they played better than AC Milan in the first leg. They had chances. Almost, I, 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 I took close to a close watch about four good chances in the first leg for Quaraskelia alone. He missed every all those four chance goal begging in the first leg. He missed a penalty yesterday again. Instead of him to play a team as in play for your team, don't play individual football. He started playing individual uh, kind of play. Osimen was coming back because Osimen gave boots. I said it here that if Osimen was in the side in the first leg, it would have made a difference. And last night we saw that difference that Osimen brought into the team. Now, from the way it is, uh, it seems uh, you know before this particular game, even when Osimen was still player, rather before the injury, before they went on injury. I remember that a lot of Nigerians or a lot of uh, football pundits are actually thinking maybe it's uh, uh, Koraj Velia that actually helping him to make those goals. But it's obvious now that Osimhen seems to be the one. <laughs> Making the goals for him. <laughs> you understand? Because uh, uh, we've seen how he performed yesterday and even the first two leg where he had every chance to turn this around for Napoli. But he, he never did. He, he, he never did that. Okay, oh, let's not even talk about the first leg. Uh, last night. What were you supposed to do? You know your, your team was one goal down. Now, you were supposed to play for the team, not playing for yourself. He was playing for himself. He would, okay, it was when AC Milan scored that goal, time, as it was already seven something minutes or eight something minutes, that he started bringing the balls into the box for Simen to suffer and just do a miracle. And eventually, Simen actually did the miracle and got that equalizer. Mm. And when they got the spot kick, I was not even expecting him to actually play the spot kick. I was expecting Simen or their captain to actually come and take the spot kick. But I was surprised he went for the ball, took the ball, and then at the end of the day, you never even, in space of a week, you miss two 
do chances for your team to actually qualify. To I just hope I won't give you okay to beat uh, Karash Kelly. If I see you, I'm trying, <laughs> I will actually plug you. Anyway, just let's uh, swap to Real Madrid's uh, story. Well, Real Madrid also, they did well uh, defeating Chelsea in that game too. They were making it four uh, goals. Uh, aggregate wise, we're looking at that story right now. You see uh, Real Madrid beat Chelsea, uh, advanced to semi finals. Congrats to the Los Merengues. In this game, they show class. They actually show class. When it comes to Champions League, if you call Champions League, you call Real Madrid. That is how it is. Mr. Champions League, that is who they are. They understand. When I, 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 I told somebody sometimes ago, and we actually discussed within ourselves, I said, if you don't want Real Madrid to win the Champions League, what do you need to do? Make sure they don't qualify from the group stage. And if they qualify, second round, knock them out, whichever team they are playing. But if Real Madrid, if Real Madrid gets to the quarterfinal and you allow them to see the semifinal, you are sure that they will get to the final. Mm -hmm. And Chelsea, Real Madrid, where it's not new, last two seasons where Chelsea won the Champions League, they actually defeated uh, Real Madrid. But last season, Real Madrid came back and revenged that defeat and they won the Champions League. This season again, over two legs, They've beaten uh, Chelsea. Uh, we can see head to head, uh, all record. Chelsea is ahead, but uh, what matter in space of uh, in space of two seasons? Right now, Real Madrid has closed up uh, has closed up that gap in stats. And in, in the two games, four goals uh, aggregate for Real Madrid. They were just too looking. Uh, they were too look, uh, looking good for Chelsea on the night. Two simple goals, Rodrigo showing class, and that was what Quaresquelia was supposed to do. Mm, Make this goal it. easy for <laughs> Simen to score for you. And he did do that. Look at the second goal. Does somebody say, fine boy Rodrigo actually <laughs> did well? Actually, <laughs> fine boy Rodrigo did well. Oh he scored goodness. against Chelsea last season. He has repeated the same feat this season again, scoring both, uh, scoring both goals in, in both legs. So uh, Real Madrid, I, 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 if, if I may say, where football things can happen, I'm seeing them in the final. Well, we've been talking concerning UEFA Champions League matches there. Chelsea versus Real Madrid ending 4 0 on aggregate. And you have Napoli against AC Milan ending 2 1. They are favoring the Rossoneris as we're able to win that particular game. Uh, well, right now, we're just going on a short break. By the time we'll come back, we'll talk about beach soccer. Come on! I don't know if you know how people are Hello, are you there? Good to have you join us. Uh, we'll be talking about big soccer there. Right now, we'll be looking at, uh, <laughs> uh, well, that particular game you just saw there has to do with uh, Nigerian big soccer. Coming up, the league is starting over there in Kebe State. And I have in the studio, uh, Busayo Oluokere will be joining us uh, to talk about uh, uh, big soccer. Busayo, good to have you on the show. It's good to be back here again on Sport360 mm. uh, <laughs> on Trust TV. And um, like you just uh, said, uh, the big soccer league, uh, courtesy of the Nigerian Big Soccer Association, is starting this weekend uh, in Kebe. KB, all roads lead to KB. I should be on my way tomorrow, God's willing, uh, for the first phase. You know, it's always first, second, third, fourth. Uh, the fourth is the final phase where mm. the teams, uh, that the best uh, four teams will have qualified uh, to the last round. So uh, tomorrow, roads lead to KB. Um, KB. Uh, this time around, we are seeing different teams. 
uh, from those teams that played. We are seeing some new teams coming on board. And um, you know that the defending champion, who took over from KB Fishers, the uh, last two seasons uh, champions, Kada, uh, Kada B Soccer Club, are saying they want to win it again. They want to show uh, the fact that uh, they want to win it the second time. And they have the players. But this season, we are seeing beach soccer. is now a vista for uh, development of youth in Nigeria. Just about two weeks ago, we had the Aquai Bomb um, Beach Soccer inaugurated. And yesterday in Abia State, uh, they've also inaugurated their own beach soccer players. So we, 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 their own beach soccer team and also uh, the chairman will be headed by ex-international, talking about uh, Ogbonaya um, Okemiri, is, is the, is the uh, chairman of that uh, Abia State uh, Beach Soccer Association. And then you've seen Ninja coming up, you've seen um, Cassina coming up, uh, Lagos are coming with different teams now, and even a team in KB are saying, no, we, we should not be seeing KB alone, we should also have a local team in KB. If Lagos can have three, why not other teams? So now they've done the beach, uh, KBA Beach Soccer Association uh, for a long time, their big KB Beach Soccer League, and uh, maybe the champion or two of them are also joining KB. So this time around, it's 10 teams uh, that will be going into the race to determine who will get to the Super 4 from the first phase. Probably uh, after this phase, we are looking to go into Kaduna or Akwai Bomb for the second phase. Then the all roads probably should be going to Lagos. Now, from all this you have said, how many teams are participating in the first phase? Ten teams. Ten. Ten teams. Two, in, two from KB. Akwai Bomb is joining. They just started and they said, we want to go and have a feel of it. And they are going to this time around. Uh, we have um, Kada, the defending champion, uh, with the likes of Jose Franks, um, uh, Emmanuel Tanko, uh, who has scored more goals uh, in the Beach Soccer League for the Nigeria Beach Soccer League. Uh, he's the one of the great players to watch out for. Uh, you want to see um, a make-up bonaya, a make-up bona rather, the man we call uh, the Ronaldo of uh, the Beach Soccer uh, League. He, he was voted in the top 100 uh, by the World FIFA uh, Football God Governing Body, talking about FIFA. Uh, so he's saying, oh, well, I've done much, but maybe he wants to play one more season uh, for the KB Fishers because he has always been saying, now nah, he should be seen as an ex-international who has done well for the game. So I, I think um, what we've done is to make sure that this season is starting from KB. The Ramadan is almost coming here. And when you see the fans that come out uh, to the feeling so quite right there, you could see on the screen, the entertainment part is there. These are uh, the rest, the local um, wrestlers. And uh, you will see Dambe, mm. you will see the uh, Zawis. I, I, I like this kind of uh, stuff. <laughs> yeah, you have like, to push. This, this, you, this you is hold awesome. one leg, you push the other. And you have to run. Immediately you push the last person, you have to run to the end of the post. The winner goes up. This uh, will come up before the uh, big soccer. You know, right? it's coming after the game. Okay. It's just to make sure that the fans that have come will also entertain themselves <laughs> uh, with what all that uh, programs. There's songs, there's food, there's entertainment, uh, there's guys who come around to uh, use their knife on themselves. Uh, they want to fight. At least there, just to push Just to get the entertainment, just to the traditional sports. sport around. And you know, it's just a time for everybody to back uh, in their own location to celebrate the Ramadan. And um, so for them, it's a good one that they said, we want to start from here. They are the champions. The defending champion, they lost it uh, to Kadastas. This was a game where uh, Kadastas defeated the champions. I, I was in this game and I was wondering what was going on uh, to the host team, but they lost it in front of their fans and this, this time around they've told the governor uh, talking about Bagudu that we want to start on a high note we want to correct the wrongs that Kada came to, um, to KB to take it because they went to Kaduna in the first season and picked it in Kaduna and Kada came back here to take it away but this season they are saying they want to start strong We've been talking about uh, big soccer, Nigeria Big Soccer League, starting over there in Kebi State, the fourth phase. And Mr. Olokera has been doing justice so to that particular uh, uh, focus right now. We are focusing on the big soccer. You've mentioned the teams that are participating, 10 teams, ten and teams. all that, and all the preparation put in place. But when it comes to uh, big soccer in Nigeria, I think a lot of people are beginning to follow that particular sport. But looking at it, uh, when is it going to turn to a federation? It's an association already, mm. and it's under the Nigerian Football Federation. Mm. Uh, most people have been mistaking it to, we don't, where's our beach soccer team? Where's the national team? And um, just last year, the, there was a time CAF had already grouped Nigeria to the, uh, talking about um, the African Nations Cup in Mozambique. All of a sudden, towards the tail end of the board, last, last board, we just saw the name of the Super, um, Super Sandy Goose removed again from the Nations Cup. Uh, so the role of the National Nigerian Beach Soccer Association is to create the league, to discover the players. It is not left for the Federation to get the Super Sand Eagles back. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, 
maybe the goodwill of um, the president, the, uh, the present president, talking about um, um, Alaji Ibrahim Musa Guzzi. So we'll look towards making sure that um, the beach soccer team is back because I, I, I know uh, from a reliable source that probably he would want to see the game. And I've said to uh, my coordinator, the president of the national coordinator of the league, talking about Alaji uh, Mahmoud Adeja, I've told him it's going to give us a good face. When we started the league in 2021, Musa Amadou um, Mevin Pinnick was at the Lagos uh, Centre because he started from Lagos. Him and uh, the then uh, Vice President, uh, talking about Barista Shayaki, they were in Lagos. So this time around that we are starting in a zone where it's close to Zafara and Sokoto. Either we have the President or we also have the General Secretary. It's just about one hour, one hour, 30 minutes drive to KB. They can be part of it. And with them, it shows that the game is back with the NFF. We've been talking concerning big soccer. Really, we'll be glad to have the Super Sun Eagles back. Back, and also why NFL will be giving that chance to be seen with their talent. Well, good one to have you, Busa Olowokere, talking about uh, B soccer over there in Kebi. It's a pleasure. And also Emmanuel Fashimi, thanks for joining on the show. On the show. Um, Adini Aji Shafes, but it's always business and fitness. Thanks for watching.